All right, so welcome back to another bit of tutorial. And in this one, we need to talk about the DC offset. Now, and what the F is this thing? Because right from the start, when you put it in something, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so I'm going to show you what it does and how we can use it. You know, the different uses of this. Because it can, it can do something pretty uh, dumb, pretty dull, or it just can, you know, be used to do something crazy. So right from the start, you have a line and you can go up or you can go down. That's it. Now I have an oscilloscope right here. It's going to show me, show me what we are doing. And then we have a spectrum so we can see if we get some noise right here, some sound. Now, uh, this what it does. It goes to middle, which is the zero crossing point. And then it goes up to the positive side, you know, to the positive. And then it goes to the negative. So we can use polarity with this way. We can go up or we can go down and then, you know, to the middle. Now, Maybe uh, you know about synthesizers and you know that sometimes you use LFOs. You use an, uh, an LFO to uh, modulate something. So an LFO is a very slow instruction of some waveform, waveform like a sine wave or a, you know, a saw or whatever. But it's super slow. It's super slow and we can barely hear this. But that instruction will, you know, we will be used to modulate some other things. Now, if it's super fast, we start getting a tone, right? We get um, an oscillator. So if I go up with the mouse and down, and then up, and then down, notice I'm, I, I see on the spectrum kind of a dumb or, you know, yeah, dumb sine wave. I'm, I'm doing my best. It, I'm trying to make a sine wave, but I'm getting more like a, you know, a triangle. Uh, there we go. So we get, a, we get a sine wave. And notice that we are getting some sound. Now, the thing is that this is super slow. And it's, uh, you know, we are not hearing anything. Everything is right here. Now, if I go right here and I do, uh, trying to make my best effort into trying to get some sound, I'm going to go really fast up and down. And I'm, I'm going to start getting something. Notice that and I'm doing my best effort there. But that, that is that we get some sound. Of course, it's not a cool sound, but it's a sound. So, you know, we could use the DC offset to go up and down and, you know, provide an instruction on how it can go up and down and we can get either an oscillation or we can get an instruction of uh, an LFO that we can use later, right? Okay, so let's just begin. I'm going to go right here and I'm going to bring the LFO, right? And again, it's just an LFO, right? We are not going to go super crazy on this one. And I'm going to go and say that we want to go up and then we want to go down. And notice that we get a sine wave. Just a sine wave. So this now, this uh, you know, this device can be used as an audio rate, uh, as an LFO. We can use it as an LFO. We can grab, listen to this instruction right here on a synthesizer, for example, and use it as an LFO. The cool thing is that when, whatever it is that you're using or how you're moving up and down, you could shape it and you can start getting different types of LFOs. Right now, we are just getting a sine wave, which is cool. Now, of course, what happens, we're going super slow and we cannot hear anything. And I'm going to, again, lower the volume just a little bit more. What happens if we go fast? Right now, we are going Hertz. Let's go and kill Hertz. Told you it's going to get loud. Notice that we start to get a tone. And this, whenever, we go, of course, we go down, we get it, we get the lows because we are going slower. And as we go up, we are getting a sound. So again, using uh, using an LFO, what we can do, we can just create different sounds with the DC offset, just going up and down uh, to the negative and the, and the positive. Pretty simple. Now, of course, just using it like this, right? I know that we are going kind of slow. Using it like this is just, you know, maybe not very useful. It would be useful to use this as, a, as, an, as an LFO, but maybe I want to get some sound out of this. Okay. So you, um, um, you can be creative because remember that when you go up and down, uh, you're going to be getting some sound. So I could bring a different uh, kind of a, you know, device. I'm going to go low in volume for now. I can bring a different device and I'm going to say, dude, I want to go and modulate this control, right? I'm going to go and do this. Something like this. So right now, notice that uh, everything is stopped. We are not playing. So we know that this one, this transport, that this steps will start playing as we uh, do play. So if I go and do play, notice that we start getting sound. Of course, we could adjust this to get different tones. 
Now, of course, we can go faster because maybe it's just too slow. And again, this is just great for experimentation as well. We can get an LFO, our custom LFO, or just, you know, do a little bit of experimentation, whatever. It doesn't matter. Right now, I'm just going to do something, whatever. It doesn't matter. All right. Now, there's one problem. Right now, we are doing some playing, right? I'm going to stop it. But notice that, the, of course, the oscillation and the DC offset keeps going on and on and on. And it's because this is not following the transport. This is a linear kind of a movement. It just starts and never stops. So right now, how can we fix this? Because what I want to do, I want to stop and stop the sound. But right now, what I could do, I could use the globals. Now, the globals, what it will do, it will uh, pretty much uh, turn on and off something. And what I want to do, I want to turn off the LFO. If I go all the way down, we are just getting no, no sound. If we go up, we get sound. So the play, this one, is linked to the transport. If I go all the way up, it means that when we do play, this is going to be on. And when I stop, it's going to be nothing. Maybe I just, you know, maybe I'm just going too fast with this. So I'm going to go a little bit slower. Right? Some really cool sounds and and all, all everything started from the with the DC offset. Right? So you know there's a lot of experimentation right here. Because right now we are using a sine wave. But what happens if I if I use and let me just bring down the intensity on this one? What happens if we use something like this? We are getting more of a song. Or if we go the other way, you know, we get the other song. Or maybe we can do something in between and start getting, you know, some weird shapes. Right. So, again, really cool. Okay, so let me show you the second example. So we know that with the DC offset, we can get some tones out of this. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to the LFO and bring the LFO right here. And we're going to say that we want to move this uh, thing up and down. And we are doing the same thing we did before. The only difference is that I'm adding a tool right here. So what I want to do, I want to get some sound. So if we want to go and get some sound, we know that we can go faster. And the way to control which frequency, you know, we are playing or we want to play is by moving this. It's the only way. Now, this is cool, but, you know, maybe I want to play my key, uh, my keyboard. I want to play some notes and I want to hit that note. So the LFO, let me just go down in volume. Uh, the LFO has a mode, which is pitch of the current note. Right now, if I go to one, it means that if I play an A, it's going to, uh, you know, run this on the A frequency. So if I, you know, go to keyboard mode and uh, go to, I don't know, play C, a C, for example, I get a C. Now, of course, it's a bit loud. I'm going to go down, maybe a little bit more. So I'm playing a C note and then I'm going to C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then C again. Now, I'm going to lower the volume. Now, notice that whenever I hit a key, it's going to stay on that pitch. Now, of course, right now we are doing sine waves, but maybe we want to saw, so we are going to get a saw. I'm going to go right here. And now we are using it as a kind of a synthesizer. We are getting a single oscillator to play whatever we play, right? Now, the thing is that this is this is not stopping. This will not stop. And it's because, remember what I've told you, there is no amp. There is no ADSR to control this. But we can fake this. And I'm going to go and say I'm gonna, I want an ADSR. And I'm going to control the tool. We could do this right here. But I much prefer to do it on the, on the volume, over volume of this. We can even use it on the game. So I'm going to go and say that uh, whenever we want to, uh, you know, maybe uh, I want to do something like this. Just do uh, like a vintage kind of a AR kind of a control, something like that. So, uh, you know, envelope for the amp. So whenever we are playing, of course, we are uh, we want to hear this. So I'm going to go up in volume. 
to maybe just one. So now if I play this, of course, the ADSR is, should be letting up, oh, of course, I need to turn off, turn off the volume. So now it works. And again, now we are just have kind of a synthesizer. So this is another uh, different use of the DC offset. Now, at the end of the day, what I want you to understand is that whenever you go up and down and in the way, in the fashion that you do it, you get different results. You might get uh, oscillations, a low frequency oscillator, or you might get, um, you know, tones. Okay, so let me show you the example number three. So now I have a synthesizer and an instrument layer. The first layer is going to be an instrument and the second layer is going to be the DC offset. So we're going to use the DC offset as an LFO. Now, of course, the DC offset works on an audio range. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't work uh, just alone on an instrument if we throw it there. It works on an audio. So if we want to listen to this one, we need to listen for the audio rate or the audio that comes out from this one. And, um, okay, so I'm going to go right here and we have a nice, good, old clarinet, right? It's just a very dumb, simple sound. So what I want to do, I want to create some kind of modulation of this one. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. I'm going to go and bring in LFO, just LFO, there we go, LFO, I'm going to say OK, and I'm going to go and me uh, be moving this up and down. But of course, I'm going to go and maybe make it uh, kilohertz. And I want this to be a fast, low frequency oscillator, just something like that. Of course, we, we are going to be managing this. So this is the, the low frequency oscillator. Maybe we can just convert it into something else because it's just too... There we go. So now, what I want to do, I want to use this as an instruction. Now, of course, I'm going to go all the way down in volume, but this is outputting something, right? So what we can do from this synth is to listen to whatever it's coming out of the DC offset or maybe this layer, and we can use it as a modulation source. So I'm going to go and use the... I'm going to forgot the name. Uh, the audio rate. You know, and the audio rate is going to be listening some uh, for some audio. I'm going to go to the same track, which is the number three, and I'm going to go to the chain and I'm going to say, I want to listen to what comes out of the, the, the you know, of the DC offset. And notice that it, it, it's just getting there. Now, maybe it's just too fast. I'm going to go and just go down on the velocity on this one. It's going to go a bit down and see what I get back. Now I'm getting something a little better. Now, maybe I'm going to go in Hertz and then I'm going to go up. I want something that, you know, we can manage. Oh, there we go. And we have this, you know, triangle uh, fashion motion. Cool. So now, of course, if I go right here, we get the same clarinet. But now we have an LFO that comes from the DC offset. Now, if I go right here and try to modulate something with this, we are modulating. We are modulating this instrument with whatever comes of the uh, DC offset. Now, of course, this is going to work. The amp is, of course, controlling this. But notice that we have no way of stopping this. This is a continue, you know, just continuous motion. Now, we can do the same thing that before. I can go right here and, I don't know, bring an ADSR, just like I did before. And if this is down, of course, whenever we play, this is going to go up and, you know, is going to play, is going to move according to the ADSR. So maybe I'm going to do a little bit of the decay. Uh, maybe a little bit of sustain, something like that. And notice that this is just not moving constantly. Now there is a there is a different. This one is controlling the shape, so but only it's only moving, and we can see right here on the audio rate that the ADSR is controlling the output of the DC offset. Now, of course, we are using just a very common waveform, but as soon as we start, you know, messing with this. We start getting, you know, different, uh, different instructions. And we are just using this uh, LFO, which is the most common LFO, but we could do a lot of things. We can maybe start messing with this one and moving this around and just to start getting different sounds. This is, of course, uh, experimentation. You just need to go and play around with this. But, you know, you have three different ways of using the DC offset. Something that maybe on your arsenal was something unusable, 
Now you know what it does, and maybe you want to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of experimentation that one. All right, so that's it. So hopefully you like this video. Remember, of course, uh, to uh, keep the lights on on this channel, to like and subscribe, and of course to check Patreon. Now, um, right? See you on the next one.